Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for Steel Skull, so let's get into it. Alrighty, Steel Skull is an epic from the Skinwalkers, so I'll go ahead and point him up. He's this guy right here with the Steel Skull. Alrighty, and as always for all of my champion guides, I will have a link to this kind of image overview of kind of the masteries and general information for the champion that you can look over on your free time. Uh, just click on the link and take your time and, and look at that whenever you want. But usually first, before I dive into the abilities, I'll dive into kind of my grades. Uh, you're not going to be using him for the campaign, so he's an F there. But he is incredible for the clan boss. He has spirit affinity. A lot of people struggle versus the force affinity. So him being spirit really bumps him up to the, being that A+, plus to give you versatility. And uh, the arena, I guess I could see for like super sustained styles. But that's not uh, not somewhere that he performs well. So C- minus there. And then dungeons, he can actually be pretty well. He's got a really good uh defense increase and some clutch heals so uh you know definitely very uh you know well versed in helping you out in dungeons and then for stat priority just kind of your best blend of speed accuracy hp defense and all that uh and it looks like i actually have hp percentage on there twice by the time i upload this i will have that fixed uh, so the one that you click in the description will be right so it's good that i kind of caught that right now but yeah just basically your best blend of speed accuracy hp and defense uh, you know, you're definitely going to want like an accuracy banner and some accuracy on your substats and speed boots for sure and, and, you know, stuff like that. So now let's dive into the abilities here. The A1 is attack one enemy two times with a 10% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. You can book this up to uh, 35% because we can add... 25% to the buff chance so a really good a1 for the clan boss because it's also a 5% and not just a two and a half the a2 remove all debuffs from a target ally then heal them by 40% so again this is some clutch heals 40% is good and, and removing debuffs is kind of an, an ability that can just be in general good throughout the course of the game and then A3 is place a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns and heal all allies by 20% of their max HP. So, you know, again, a very good ability for the clan boss and dungeons. You're usually going to want at least one hero that buffs your party's defense. So he fills that role and also poison and and also has a big single target heal. So a very well-rounded character for your clan boss and dungeon endeavors. So I will go ahead and pull up my Steel Skull. Let's see here. All right, so uh, here's my Steel Skull. And as we can see, I've got a lot of speed and, and then uh, some HP and a little bit of regeneration. This is kind of like... A baseline way that you might think about building him you can obviously swap it out a little bit and have like four HP pieces and two speed you don't have to do it perfectly like this uh, it's just kind of like a baseline idea of how to gear him we can see here that the banner being accuracy is pretty important for him and then you know uh, on the other ones you're just gonna want ideally like speed and accuracy on the substats and stuff got nine accuracy here and some hp on the main stat so that's pretty good um the uh the spider dungeon relics like the rings amulets and banners they actually roll a little bit different like for example they can't have like attack percentage or um like hp percentage or crit chance as like the main stat so there's a few different little quirks here but mainly you just want to try to get as much accuracy and speed and hp out of these artifacts that you can uh as far as the you know the top ones are kind of always the same you know you're just looking for the best substats you can get because the weapon always has attack the helm always has hp and the shield always has defense but on the bottom here you're probably going to want gloves that either have hp or defense as a main stat and then get speed and accuracy in the substats for our armor when i originally built him i went for accuracy and this one did roll defense and hp as a substat so it's this is a pretty good introductory piece i will probably replace this at some point with an hp percent chest 
that has defense and speed and accuracy as a substat if I were like min maxing but this is kind of a good like introductory place to start just put accuracy on your main chest uh, on your main stat for your chest until you can more min max and get accuracy on like your banner and your substats then for the boots I obviously went with speed as a main stat and then you know you're you're just looking for kind of HP and defense and accuracy on the substats there so yeah, that's kind of like the general overview of Steel Skull, a very good, well-rounded champion that can perform well in the dungeons and the clan boss primarily, so definitely worth investing in and six-starring, etc. Now I will go over, I'll, I'll do an actual clan boss battle kind of here at the end of the video so you can kind of see him in action. So I usually like to pick a difficulty that's kind of relevant to most of you, so I'll pick hard and it's void. And then we'll kind of throw together a team here. Um, so I'm probably gonna want to go with Kale. Think, yeah, that's about right. Steel Skull's in there. That's the most important thing. We, we wouldn't want to start the battle without him in there. That'd be kind of funny. Alrighty, so for the video, I'm gonna leave it on auto so that I can kind of talk and I'm not distracted. But in general, you are usually going to want to play your clan boss battles manually so that you can really min-max your abilities. And um, also, what was I, what was I going to say? Uh, yes, yeah, Steel Skull is also kind of cool because he doesn't require a lot of micromanagement. He's a hero that you can kind of leave on auto and, and, it will, and the AI will probably play him optimally for the most part. Um, you know... So you don't really have to worry about super min-maxing him and having him waste turns and stuff. The AI will usually play it pretty close to right. Obviously not perfect usually, but uh, you know, that is a cool... It's cool to have champs that you can auto and feel like it's not going to be a garbage result. And Steel Skull is definitely one of those. Um, also, I didn't really go over the masteries fully yet. Uh, usually, the most important question that people are asking when it comes to like champion guides is you know do I go for giant slayer or war master and uh, you're gonna want war master on steel skull and you know that that image that I have down in the video description will show a complete list of all the masteries it's this thing right here so that will show you everything you need to know as far as the masteries and he is one that you're gonna want to get the war master and not the uh, giant slayer you're also gonna want to go for attack and support he is a healer so there's a, there's a, there's a, he's actually a healer and a debuffer because of the poison. So, uh, you know, his tree is a little bit interesting in the support because you kind of have to get lasting gifts and master hexer on your support tree. So you have to kind of finagle and, and spread out a little bit there towards the end. But the offense tree is super basic. You're just going to kind of start with crit rate, work your way to the left and go down to war master, mostly in a straight line. So yeah, I'll kind of let this play out and then you'll be able to see at the end kind of the the damage numbers you can expect like a, a you know a fully invested in steel skull to do for your team on hard mode against void and then uh, you know just to avoid having dead air I'll, I'll kind of you know I'll try to talk some random points here um, you know on the clan boss you can only have one HP burn at a time so you don't want to bring multiple HP burns. We can see here that I have Juliana and I wouldn't want to bring someone else that does HP burn optimally because you're going to avoid kind of diminishing returns there. You can also only have a maximum of 10 debuffs active at a time on the clan boss. So if the clan boss has 10 debuffs and you try to apply something, it's going to automatically get resisted. So just kind of something to keep track there on the top left is to not let yourself go over... Uh, you know, or when you're like at 9 or 10 debuffs to not try and apply something and not overlap and, and kind of waste things. So yeah, you know, this team's setup is, you know, you have your Apothecary for the speed boost and turn meter boost and clutch heals. And then he also works well with Giant Slayer, so he's a good one to have. Then the Steel Skull for the defense up and the poisons and clutch heals that he brings. Then we have Aethar and Juliana that are both debuffers that self-sustain. They have the lifesteal set. Uh, that way my healers can kind of focus on each other and KO because your healers usually are not going to have lifesteal. So having 
you know, two or three heroes that are self-sustainable with the vampire set kind of lets your healers focus on themselves and your main DPSer, which Kale is my main DPSer. He is a debuffer and a damage dealer, and he's going to need heals because he cannot self-sustain right there. You see them bringing Kale back up to full health after he got stunned there. So that's kind of like a general way to set up. Obviously, it's going to be different depending on your your roster and who you're bringing to the table but this is kind of like your introductory to the end game kind of normal setup that you'd be wanting to hit like hard and brutal and and nightmare with nightmares can be a little bit different because nightmare is so crazy but yeah this is kind of you know a way that will get you into hard and, and brutal and, and and even be viable in nightmare kind of doing a setup similar to this So yeah, we can probably sustain for a little bit longer here. We can already see that I lost Kale and Juliana. And then, you know, you know they're going to try to live for as long as they can. Apply some poisons there. That's good that he got another Holy Flame off. But there it is. And now we can see the, uh, the damage numbers here. Uh, 14 million is definitely respectable on hard. Uh, you know, admittedly it's not incredible. Um, but it's definitely respectable. So Steel Skull can can uh you know really perform well for your clan boss team and now uh we see the numbers here he he even did over two million damage so so very good there and uh before i end the video i will pull up my steel skull again just so you can kind of see the masteries live and and what i was talking about there so yeah we just started here super simple on the offense tree we just start here Go a little bit left and a little down, and then a little bit left and a little down. This one can get a little bit convoluted because we really want to get Lasting Gifts and Master Hexer just to make those poisons last a little bit longer. So it, it, this one gets a little bit wonky, but you'll have that image down in the, in the description if you need it. So uh, yeah, that's going to kind of do it for this video. If you have any questions about Steel Skull or anything, uh, definitely drop it down in the comments. I always... Uh, you know, enjoy answering you guys and listening to your input. So as always, have a good rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Peace.